Hello, uh, good morning, or good afternoon, or good a good evening, or a good whatever time of night or day it happens to be, wherever you happen to be. This is Liviana coming to you again with another installment of Republic News. Uh, as is so often the case with Republic News, I will be giving you an op-ed this morning, um, an opinion editorial, wherein I uh, choose a subject and talk about it at, at some length. Uh, I will give you a discourse, basically, on some topic. So what I would like to talk with you about today is a branch of philosophy um, and um, specifically I would like to talk with you about that branch of philosophy which is known as ethics. Now before I go into the specifics I'm going to back up and explain to you what, what I mean by talking about branches of philosophy. I'm talking about a, a systematic philosophy. Okay. Um, now, many of my listeners will know that I have a bachelor's degree in philosophy. That was one of my two majors when I was an undergraduate. And uh, at, in undergraduate philosophy um, departments, the focus is generally logic and the history of ideas. So we study the various philosophers throughout history, starting usually with the Greek uh the Ionian Milesians, like Astales and Anaximandros and Anaximenes, okay, and then come forward all the way up to contemporary analytic philosophy, which may not be quite contemporary anymore. It was uh, late 1900s and throughout the 20th century, but I think by the end of the 20th century, people had come to realize that the distinction between speculative and analytic philosophy was a bit artificial and um, pretentious, that there were... Uh, analytic philosophers long before Gottlob Frege, and there have been speculative philosophers after uh, Wittgenstein and um, Quine and so forth. So, um, and, and, and many of these philosophers have done both. René Descartes, for example, was both a mathematician and a logician on one hand, but also involved in speculative philosophy. So, um, I... I'm going to just dive in here and explain what, what I'm talking about. Each, each of these philosophers attempted to develop a systematic philosophy, which is to say a philosophical system, uh, their philosophy of life, if you will. And, and so when you are uh, trying to uh, develop a systematic philosophy, uh, some people describe it as a tree with branches, but I like to use the... Um, the simile of uh, a structure, an edifice, a building. And I, I generally like to use uh, the simile of a Greek temple because of the parts of the building. Um, <clears throat> so imagine, if you will, that philosophy or a systematic philosophy is like a temple. Uh, the foundation of the temple has to do with being and essence. Uh, being or essence on the one hand and existence on the other hand. Uh, this is known as ontology. Unfortunately, most of the time in systematic philosophy, uh, the ontology is presupposed, unexamined, and assumed, and it's part of your culture, uh, however, uh, you know, or your religion, uh, however, your worldview is when you start uh, working on systematic philosophy. Uh, trying to develop your own philosophy, uh, that ontology will be presupposed, unexamined, and assumed. And that's unfortunate. But that is supposed to be the foundation of this temple of philosophy. The pavement on top of the foundation is where most people start. Now, there was a time uh, around, you know, Descartes actually did this. Uh, he started what was known as the uh, epistemological turn, where people would start with epistemology and then do metaphysics. But, uh, no, I, certainly those two are very interrelated, just like metaphysics and ontology. But I, I don't think uh, that's a proper starting place. And then along came the analytic philosophers in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I mean, a late, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they did what has sometimes been called a linguistic turn, where you started out with analysis of language and logic. And I don't think that's an appropriate starting point either. Um, so anyway, um, 
when when you uh, when you build your pavement, which is generally, as I said, the starting point for anyone developing their own systematic philosophy, uh, the pavement is actually an application of those ontological views to more specific ideas about reality or being or essence and actuality or existence. And this is known as metaphysics. That is the branch of philosophy known as metaphysics. Oftentimes, ontology and metaphysics are uh, studied as if they were one thing. And perhaps it's useful to think of them in that way because they are so very closely related. Um, but metaphysics deals with questions about, you know, what is real, um, what is the nature of reality? Um, are there universals and particulars? How do they relate to one another? Are they just are, are the universals just names? Do they have an independent objective existence? Do they exist only? Do they do, 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 do there, is this essence only within the particular um, and so forth? Now, I'm not going to go into this uh, explaining it too much at the moment because I would like to get on uh, with the video too. Uh, the next bit uh, to to get on and explain the the temple of philosophy and then talk about this one specific branch and certain terms that are used in that branch. Um, so at some point in in the future, I may come back and talk about each of these uh, various branches, or you know some maybe more than others, or some maybe more likely than others. Uh, but anyway, once you have your foundation and your pavement. You need walls, okay? So you build those out of ideas about truth and knowledge. And this is the branch of philosophy known as epistemology. Now, there are various schools of thought within epistemology, including rationalism, empiricism, uh, epistemological pragmatism, and epistemological skepticism. Um, the one question on which the vast, overwhelming majority of philosophers, if not every philosopher ever, agrees is the the answer to the question what is knowledge and that answer is knowledge is justified true belief everybody agrees or almost everybody i'm just going to say almost everybody because i don't want to make an absolute statement and then have to say oh wait here's some guy that i just discovered who who didn't agree with this but <laughs> no one in my studies uh, ever disagreed with that um, and when I say justified true belief, a lot of people will get their hackles up and talk about, well, no, knowledge and belief are not the same thing. No, no, you don't understand what I, uh, the term belief is, is used to mean in this context. We are not talking about uh, an unquestioned, unexamined um, article of creed. We are talking about if a person, a subject, if a subject S knows a proposition P, then S believes P. P is true, and S is justified in believing P. This is where the disagreements come in. Uh, what is truth? You know, how do you know that the, that the proposition is true? What What is truth? What constitutes truth? And what is proper justification for believing in any given proposition? And then you have uh, the, these four different schools of thought. Now, I, there are other schools, but these are the four main schools, um, which disagree on, all of, on, on both of those questions, what is truth and, and what constitutes justification for belief. And so you'd have rationalists who would talk about reason, you'd have empiricists who would talk about experience, and experience is a, a technical jargon term. It doesn't mean like uh, wisdom gained from life experience, not that kind of experience. It means sense perception, and it refers to um, their, their technique, their method. The empirical method or the scientific method involves observation and experimentation, gathering statistics and, and so forth, um, statistical data. Um, so... And then you have your pragmatist who would say, well, sometimes reason works and sometimes, um, you know, sense perception works. And so, yeah. And then you've got the skeptic who would say, nobody is ever justified in believing anything at any time for any reason. And therefore, no knowledge is possible. So, so you have that. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. I'm not going to go into truth. If I start talking about what is truth, I, I could make a series of videos that go on for hours and hours, so maybe some other time. Um, so uh, 
now you have your foundation, you have your pavement, you have your walls. So you want some decoration. So you, you bring in ideas of art and beauty. And this is known as the branch of philosophy called aesthetics. Uh, so you want to, you know, like uh, hang some paintings, put some statues in a temple, uh, and so forth. Um, you need uh, columns to support the roof, and those are made of ideas about justice in personal conduct, or what is sometimes called internal justice. And this branch of philosophy is known as ethics. And then you put the roof on, which is made of ideas about justice in society, or what is sometimes called external justice. And this is the branch of philosophy known as politics. Now, politics does not mean simply who has a voice in making decisions, uh, you know, like, uh, is, it, is it one person an autocracy, or is it everybody has to agree on any given thing completely in order to have, I mean, you've got this one person autocracy and you've got everybody has to agree which is absolute democracy and then you've got gradations in between so um, those are generally thought of as political and with very great justification those are probably the in the, in the strictest sense of the word those are political um, conceptions but politics and philosophy also includes legal philosophy so we, we talk about law and things like whether uh, External justice should be retributive or compensatory or something else. Um, and you know, uh, if you if you commit a crime against someone, should should you be punished or should you pay them compensation? That sort of thing. Um, and um, uh, and and um, various other concepts involved in legal philosophy and um, politics also in in this uh, sense of uh, the branch of philosophy known as politics uh, also includes economics because economics is also about external justice, but it's about economic justice. Now, again, these are not the only studies of law or economics. The law is its own field, and people study law, uh, learn the laws which have been made in a given society and learn precedents which have been established by legal courts and so forth and so on. Um, and economics is um, a social science which deals with things like law of supply and demand and modern monetary theory, fiat currency, currency backed by some precious metal or other actual um, commodity with an actual value instead of just, you know, the fiat, the good word of the government or whatever. Um, so, but we do have fiat currency in, in this modern day and age, and therefore that uh, most economic schools of thought nowadays have still been basing their concepts in, oh, say, 19th century ideas about money that is backed by something and there really isn't anything backing money which is why yes the government could just print as much money as they want to do something with <laughs> and say that it has this certain amount of value they don't have to tax they don't have to worry about inflating the currency uh, and, and inflating the currency only means printing more money or minting more money or both it doesn't mean prices go up Prices go up because there are no price controls. You can have price controls and wage controls, all kinds of nifty stuff you can do in economics that will keep inflated prices from occurring just because you have inflated the currency. Um, and in fact, if you have a hard money currency, a hard money situation means there's less money to go around, so there are higher uh, unemployment, uh, less people with jobs, less people have money, and so forth and so on. Uh, I'm, I'm belaboring the point and I need to move on. Okay, so let me get now to the subject of this video, which is the branch of philosophy known as ethics. And to be precise, I will be talking about four terms and I want to make distinctions between them. These terms are ethics, morals, scruples, and folkways. Ethics, morals, scruples, and folkways all concern behavior or conduct, and they overlap to some extent, but they are not synonyms. Now, I realize that common usage treats the terms ethics and morals as more or less synonymous, 
but I contended that they should not be seen as identical in meaning. I am also aware of the etymology of the two words, in that ethics comes from ethos, which is a classical Greek word that means custom, and morals comes from uh, the Latin word, classical Latin word, moris, which means customs. Okay, so yeah, those two words did mean the same thing once upon a time, but they didn't mean what they mean today. Uh, and when we talk about ethics or morals today, we are talking about uh, personal conduct and not just custom. However, we are also talking about custom. If we're talking about ethics in the sense of the whole branch of philosophy, which deals with the science of conduct, because as you will see, there is something about custom involved. But let me um, just uh, keep going here. Adding to the complication involved in distinguishing between the two words ethics and morals, or ethics and morality, is the fact that the discipline of philosophy uses the term ethics to refer to that branch of the tree or temple of philosophy which deals with the science of conduct, under which header all four of these terms, ethics, morals, scruples, and folkways, should be placed. I believe that this complication can be resolved by bearing in mind that the use in philosophy to refer to the science of conduct is an example of technical jargon and should be considered an umbrella term. And therefore the four, including ethics itself, itself fall under uh, the umbrella, which is also called ethics. Uh, and I realize that's confusing, but, uh, you know, I could make up some new word, but... Uh, how would I get everyone to agree on it, right? <laughs> so, um, um, how do I distinguish these terms, uh, ethics and morality, and also scruples and folkways? How do I distinguish them from one another, apart from or rather under the umbrella of the technical jargon, the technical name of ethics for the entire field of study? All right, let me answer my own question. An ethic or an ethical system is part of a worldview. Now, a worldview is an entire outlook on life and yourself and everything. Uh, and, and a worldview can be cultural, it can be uh, philosophical, it can be religious. Uh, if it's a sacred tradition, which is not quite the same thing as a religion in that a sacred tradition is a culturally specific thing and a religion tends to claim not to be and engage in what can be considered to be a form of imperialism by means of proselytization and missionary work and, and attempts to, to convert people, basically. Um, so, um, in the case of a, of a sacred tradition, um, that's actually part of a culture. Uh, and inseparable from a culture, so I'm not going to treat it as separate in this in in this uh, discussion because it falls under culture and therefore is separate from religion, but it's not separate from culture. Ah, so an ethic or an ethical system is part of a worldview, be it cultural, philosophical, or religious, and essentially static, although subject to interpretation, and thus basically unchanging apart from exegesis, which is a fancy Greek word that means interpretation, and application. Regarding an ethic as more or less objective <coughs> would not be wrong, although it would be perhaps imprecise. <coughs> to elaborate on this latter notion, I should say that the underlying concepts of an ethic do not themselves change, but the interpretation and thus the application of an ethic may vary over time or due to sectarian differences of perspective. In order to hold this understanding, I must disregard uh, hyperliteralistic legalism, which I would insist is an aberration of ethical thought due to the innate irrationality of such a perspective, which invariably leads to self-referential incoherence, doublethink, and cognitive dissonance. Uh, and this often comes about because of the uh, potential for catch-22 situations. Now, I, I will, at some point in the future, I will do another video probably. I'm not going to promise because I don't know, but maybe. Uh, I would like to, and, and it's something that I can uh, carry on about for some length. Um, wherein I explain the different types of 
schools of thought in ethical philosophy, uh, the main, the four main schools of thought are uh, legalism, intentionalism, consequentialism, and situationism. Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to go into that right now. An ethic. Um, uh, an ethic, therefore, well, I'll, I'll, I will summarize in a bit. Uh, a morality, on the other hand, is societal. It is malleable with respect to time and place and therefore relative, although not, like, radically relative. Morals change as the society ebbs and flows in, its, in various factors, including education, experience, technological changes, exposure to other societies, migration, environmental factors, and so on. What is regarded as moral by a given society will change over time, and this change is more than mere reinterpretation and application. The underlying concepts themselves change. If a social group immigrates to another geographic location, the physical environment of their new home, as well as their new neighbors, may affect their morality over time. With technological advances, new challenges arise, and new understandings are born as solutions to those new challenges are discovered. Uh, these may also under alter the underlying moral concepts of the social group. Again, uh, the quality of education in a society fluctuates over time, and this too can change basic concepts of a society as some things are forgotten and other things are learned. <clears throat> Scruples are individual viewpoints on conduct and behavior which are usually influenced to a greater or lesser extent by the morals of the society in which the individual lives and potentially also by the ethics of the various worldviews with which the individual may have come in contact. Scruples will, for most individuals, change over time, although slowly, but they change due to various influences and experiences as well as continuing education. Uh, most of us don't believe the same concepts of right and wrong that we believed when we were four years old, for example. You know? um, now, folkways are either cultural or societal or both, and tend to be rather conservative, by which I mean they change very, very slowly. However, the reasons which were their source or sources may be forgotten or lost over time. While some folkways have an origin in an ethic or a morality, uh, if the original ethical or moral basis be lost or forgotten, they become mere traditional custom and thus are worthy of the name folkway uh, for those who semi-consciously practice them without understanding of the reason or reasons for their existence. There are many examples of this sort of thing, uh, and I can go into that in some detail as well, but I'm going to... Um, save that for another time as well. Now, folkways are also a uh, study in cultural anthropology, um, but uh, what I'm talking about here are, are folkways as studied as part of the discipline of philosophy in that branch thereof known as ethics. So in summary, an ethic is a static and more or less objective aspect of a worldview uh, a morality is a relative aspect of a given society, which changes usually slowly, but it does change. Um, so it's it's not hyper relativistic. It doesn't like change radically every you know second or minute or day or year, but it does change over time. Um, scruples are individual and generally variable. Uh, they will change a little more quickly than a morality itself, uh, usually, um, but they also are typically pretty slow uh, to change, uh, as uh, people have these ideas of right and wrong, and uh, they are very basic concepts uh, to a person. These are things we are taught from childhood, and, um, and then we form our own ideas about them, and so those are our scruples, our own ideas. And then uh, folkways are social, societal, or cultural, or both, and relative, but usually change only very slowly within a given society and or culture. So 
there you have uh, my little uh, discourse on um, certain terms that are used in the uh, branch of philosophy known as ethics. And I'm going to now beam up to my V11 Stormbird and warp out. So I will leave you with my usual benediction. Until next time, have fun, but stay safe. This is Liviana signing off.